Let's start working some examples. Example 3.1, do students want to stay on quarters? So we're going to have this, we actually are going to semesters in a couple of years, but for right now we're staying on quarters. Let's assume that 60% of all Cal Poly students favor staying on the quarter system. Suppose we take a random sample of five students, and then we're asked a couple of questions about finding probabilities. Now, could we write out this entire sample space? Yes, but it would be very, very time consuming. Because remember, we'd have to start with all five of them wanting. So let's say F is for favor, all five of them favoring, and N is for not favor. And then the first one would not favor, then the rest of them would favor, so on and so forth. It would, it would be a huge sample space. So we don't want to do that. Are there ways that we can use the rules, these probability rules, to get our answers? And the answer is yes. Now we want to use good notation. And I'm just going to make a note above here. You're frequently going to see, and hopefully you get in the habit of writing something like P of whatever. This is telling me that I want the probability of what, of whatever we're interested in equals, and then a value. The value would be between zero and one inclusive. In other words, it includes zero and one. So let's start with What's the probability that all five favor staying on the quarter system? And what rule did we use? Let's see, probability that all five favor. And to make it easy, I'm gonna do F is favor and NF is um, don't favor. You notice there is no third option. We'd have to make it very clear in the problem statement that there was a no opinion. And since we don't, we're going to assume favor and not favor, don't favor. So to have that work, what would the first student for all five to favor, what does the first student have to do? Well, they have to favor it. And what about, let's see, let's rewrite it this way. The first favors. And what does the second one have to do? And the second has to favor. And what else has to happen? Well, it has to go through all five of them have to favor. We see the word and here, because the first and the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth all have to favor. Is there a rule that we could use? Well, yeah, the only one that has an and in it is the multiplication rule for independent events. You're like, well, how would I know that's independent? We're assuming that you're walking around campus, you're taking a sample of students. You're not talking to a small group of five students. So if I would talk to someone, let's say, up in the, um, down in the engineering building and ask that question, and then I went up to, I don't know, the biology building or somewhere else and said, hey, do you, and asked a student that question, would their answers be independent? Would one affect the other? And the answer is no, okay? We can pretty safely assume that. So then it's going to be the probability that the first favors, all the way multiplying through probability that the fifth favors. Now, what's the probability of favoring? Well, let's see. Probability of favoring is given to us, and that is 60%, in other words, 0 0.6. Probability of not favoring it, just to make this complete, is 0 0.4. Remember, to be a valid probability model, the total would have to be 1. So let's see. Now we have 0 0.6 times 0 0.6, and we have to do that five times. In other words, you could have just written it 0 0.6 to the fifth, and that gives us approximately 0 0.07, so about 7%. Now, which rule did we use? If we go back up here, we look and said, oh, we use that multiplication rule for independent events. Will there be a rule if we don't know if the events are independent? Yes, and that'll come later. What about the next one? What's the probability that at least one student out of five favors staying on the quarter system? Probability that at least one um, favor staying on the quarter. It could be one, it could be two it could favor, because it's saying at least one. It could be all five want it. Well, in this case, what would be the complement to that? One minus the probability that zero favor it. 
All right, because everything else, there could be one or two or three or four or five students who favor it. But the complement here, and this is actually the complement rule, of at least one is none. So then we're going to go back and say one minus the probability that the first doesn't want it and the second doesn't want it and so on and so forth. Hopefully this is looking pretty familiar, like, oh, wait a minute, that is just that multiplication rule for independent events again, and it is. Probability the first doesn't favor times the probability the second doesn't favor all the way up to the probability that the fifth doesn't want it either. Because remember, we want one of the, none of them to. One minus 0 0.4, how many times? Five. And we get 0 0.99. So the probability, the odds are very good that you're going to get at least one student. Am I saying exactly one student? No, I'm saying at least one. Moving on to the next example, this is actually a marketing example. It's about a theater. So suppose that a movie company is considering opening a theater, a 20 theater complex in Lansing, Michigan. I actually used to live in Dearborn and the uh, Michigan state is up in Lansing. Let's suppose that the um, marketing company conducts a poll, a resident poll of 5,000 people to gauge interest. They collect data on age by category, and the number of movies the person watches per month at the theaters, zero, one to two, three to nine, or 10 or more. And the data is summarized in this chart here. Now, remember with marketing, this is just a sidebar. If you haven't, or if you have taken marketing, there are four Ps, right? There's product, placement, price, and promotion. So marketing is not, is just, a lot of people think it is just the promotion part, but it's actually figuring out in this case, whether there is interest in having a theater, a 20 theater complex in Lansing, Michigan. So they want to know how the residents feel. So let's do this just as a side. What is the observational unit for this? And obviously there's not a question here specifically about that, but just as a reminder, the observational unit is each what? And I hope you think, well, it's each resident of Lansing, Michigan, because that's who they're interested in. Did it specify it had to be adults? No, they're just asking for the residents. What's the population? Well, the population is everyone that we're interested in, and that would be all residents of Lansing, Michigan. So let's get back to the probability. Be careful when you read these. As a note, um, if I'm looking at more than 10 movies a month, you're gonna see that 200 of the, so there were 200 people out of the 5,000 total who were under 30 and watched more than at least 10 movies a month. You'll notice that this total down and this, if you total these down here and then across, they both add to 5,000. These have to add up to the same number. If they don't, then you have a problem somewhere. So determine the probability that a randomly chosen resident, okay, and this first one sees zero movies at a month at theaters. So I want the probability that they see zero movies per month at the theater. Do we have to write out the entire sample space? No. Do we have the size of the entire sample space? Yeah. Remember, we took a sample of 5,000 how many people see zero movies? Well, hopefully you think, okay, I'm gonna to go to the zero and then I'm going to go all the way across and see the total is 1200. And we get 0 0.24 and there we go. First one done. Remember, we're looking at the event we're interested in. The event in this case is seeing zero movies a month at the theaters, had nothing to do with your age. All they were interested in was seeing zero movies a month. So we have the count of the event of interest, and then we have the count of the total number that uh, are in this sample. This is the same chart. I just wanted to have it again at the top here, just so that as you're working through, you can see it a little bit uh, more easily, especially if you have a paper printout. Next one is the probability that you're under... 30 or the resident is under 30. 
hopefully think, okay, well, once again, we're looking at 5,000 residents under 30. Well, this time I'm going to read down the column and there are 1,900 who are under 30. And obviously we're going to be using calculators as we do this. I would not have you calculate any of this by hand. If this isn't making sense, make sure you go back and review the rules, uh, basic rules, just to say, okay, what is an event? What's the outcomes of interest? So, so on and so forth. Just make sure or rewatch the video and make sure you're understanding what's going on here. What is the probability that sees at least one movie a month at the theater? So let's see, the probability of at least one movie. Now, let's think about it again. Could we add up all of the one, at least one movie? Could we add up the 1500, the 1900, and the 400? Sure, we could certainly do that. But is there an easier way to do it? Yeah, it's one minus the probability that they see zero movies. This is that complement rule again. One minus, let's see, see zero movies is 1200 divided by the 5,000. Could I use that disjoint rule for, uh, excuse me, could I use the addition rule for disjoint events? Sure, you're gonna get the same answer. It's just a little bit longer. So if I ever ask you to you tell me which rule you're using, tell me which rule you used. But once again, either way is totally correct to calculate it. What's the probability of sees zero movies a month or one to two movies a month at a theater? Let's see, probability of zero movies or one to two movies. Now, if you see zero movies a month, can you also see one to two movies a month? No. So we know that these are mutually exclusive events. So let's go back up and see what we have here, what rule. Well, we're looking for or, so we know it's either going to be the general addition rule or the addition rule for just disjoint events because both of them have or between the two events. We know they're disjoint because you can either see zero or one or two, but you can't do both at the same time. So we can just literally add the probabilities together. So let's see, see zero movies. I'm gonna show all the work. Obviously we've done seeing zero movies before, but I just wanna make sure it's complete here. So we have 1200, let's actually, let me just do zero movies plus the probability of one to two movies. That's 1,200 over the 5,000 plus how many saw one to two? Well, hopefully you can see it right there, 1,500. And we get 0 0.24 plus 0 0.3 gives me 0 0.54. And we've already talked about which rule is the addition rule for disjoint events. How about sees zero movies and is under 30? Let's see, probability sees zero movies and is under 30. Now it's tempting to go to um, the table and just say, well, I'll just, or go up to the rules and say, well, what can I do? I'll just use a rule. We can't assume independence here, all right? They're not independent. We'll talk more about independence as we go along. But there's something really powerful we can use here. And we've got a table. So when we have a table, even if we know the rule, it's actually better to use the table in this case. And you're like, well, what do you mean if I knew the rule? There's a different rule that we could use and there is a way to come about it, but there's actually an even easier way because we have this table that breaks everything down. So I'm going to erase what we have here. Do I know how many people were, saw zero movies in month and is under 30? And the answer is yes, it's right here. We know that there are 700 people who fall into that category. So we need to use the table.
How about C0 movies a month or is under 30? All right, so probability C0 movies or is under 30. You're like, well, can't I just use that? Aren't they mutually exclusive? Well, let's see. Do we have crossover between them being under 30 and seeing zero movies? Yeah, we have 700 people. So let's see. You're like, what do you mean? I don't quite see it. Are they mutually exclusive? In other words, do they have no outcomes in common? And the answer is no. You can be under 30 and see zero movies. There's 700 right there. So we're going to have to use that general addition rule. So we're going to have to add the probability that they see zero movies plus the probability they're under 30 minus the probability, oops, sorry about that, pro probability of zero movies and, oh boy, that was a little ugly, zero movies and under 30. Let's see why that makes sense. We're interested in the probability. So we're just like, okay, how would we do this? First of all, how many people are C0 movies? Well, we know there are 1,200 total. And also they're under 30, all right? So if we add the 1,200 and 1,900, we've, kept, we've added the 700 in twice, and that's the problem. So we're going to get rid of it by getting rid of the duplicate will get rid of the duplication by taking away the zero and minus 30. So let's see, C zero movies, there are 1200 out of the 5,000. And we see that right here. There are 1900 who are under 30. And now we're going to take away one of the we want one of the 700s, but we don't need the 700 from here and the 700 from here. So we'll take away one of the 700s. Whoops, not 7,000. 700. And we end up with, um, I'm just going to show you the number here on when you're showing your work, please show all the steps. But at this point we've done, you know, actually I'll just write the numbers here for you just so you can see them. You're like, well, why couldn't I just go to this step for my final answer? The thing is, if you make any mistakes along here, I can see it if you show me what your decimals are. And if you don't, then I have to take off, I would have to take off more points. Number seven, sees at least 10 movies a month or is 30 to 50 years old. Well, let's see. You're like, well, aren't we just going to, have to do the same thing we did before? Pretty much. So I'm going to just give you the answer for that. And I'm going to have you do the calculation. All right. Remember, the numbers are going to be a little bit different, but I'll give you a hint here. You're going to start with 400 over 5,000. So this is just a, just to have you practice um, like we did in number six, same idea in number seven. Number eight, finally, then we'll stop here with this video. Um, see zero movies a month or is over 50. Now you can use that. Let's take a peek, go back up. I'll erase all that. Probability that sees zero movies a month. So here we're interested in this or is over 50. Are those mutually exclusive? Yeah, you, they don't have any outcomes in common because there's a zero right here in the box. So you could use either the general addition rule and subtract a zero or use that addition rule for mutually exclusive events. So we want the probability of zero movies or over 50. And let's see the probability of zero movies. I'm just going to use that general addition rule just to make sure that we understand. 
y over 5 over 50 minus the probability of zero movies and over 50. Well, let's see. We've seen this many times. There are 1,200 people who have seen um, no movies. We're going to add in 1,000 out of the 5,000 who have seen, who are over 50. Now, if you look what the overlap is, it's actually zero. And you end up with 0 0.44.